Hello friends, welcome to our channel Knowledge Amplifier. So already in our previous video, we have discussed many concepts related to Snowflake stored procedure, right? If you want to know the detailed explanation of those videos, you can go through the link given in the description box. And today in this particular video, I am going to discuss another very important concept, which is for loop, okay? So we have discussed while loop, and now we are going to see how we can use for loop in our Snowflake stored procedure, okay? So let us try to understand the problem statement first and to solve that particular problem I am going to use for loop and some more concepts I will be explaining which will surely help you to build other stored procedure based on your business requirement okay. So I will go to snowflake console and I am already having a table which is basically iris data set. I will just take this little bit up and here you can see our data first column is integer then second, third, fourth and fifth column are double type and the last one is fair carrot string type, right? Now what we want, we want to convert this kind of tabular data into key value pair, okay? So what is the meaning of key value pair? It is like it will be a JSON data completely enclosed by one array, okay? So individual JSON element will be like one one entity. Like if you consider the first row, how the JSON will be getting created? column name will be id and column value will be 1 then column name will be sepal length column value will be 7.0 column name will be sepal width column value will be 3.2 like that so if you see our json data what we want that looks like this so complete json as i have told you it is enclosed within one array so here square bracket opens and this square bracket end at the end where our json data finishes that is basically here right as you can see and here if you see the particular data how it is see column name column value column name column value like that so for the first one column name is id column value is one then if you consider the first row in our table the column name is sepal length right and column value is 7.0 similarly here it is showing that same column name is sepal length column value is 7 okay then if you consider this particular third column element column name is sepal width and the column value is basically what was the column value let me run it again so column name is sepal width column value is 3.2 right here it is showing the same column name is sepal width column value is 3.2 like that like that it will be going for each row each cell it will be taking it will be generating this kind of json data and will put in that array suppose that is the requirement so what we can do to solve this particular problem right that's what i am going to explain so for that we are going to take the help of while loop as well as for so first what we will do, we will execute a select star command, okay, and we will be getting all the result. So that will be stored in result set. And what we can do, we can do result dot next to go or iterate one by one rows, right? So we will be keeping one while loop to iterate row wise how we already did down in our previous session, okay? Now for individual row to iterate in the columns, what we can do, we can use for loop. So while loop will be using to iterate row wise and for loop will be using to iterate column wise suppose okay that's what that's how we are going to create our code okay so how our code looks like let me explain line by line so create or replace procedure demo stored procedure here i have given the name you can give anything as per your choice then returns variant not null okay so as you can see this is nothing but a json data which is enclosed within one array so we cannot simply pass by a string data type or number data type or our conventional data type, right? So rather instead of that, what Snowflake support variant data type, a beautiful data type for semi-structured data, we can make use of that, right? And then here we are putting language as JavaScript, okay, as dollar dollar starts and here our dollar dollar ends inside which we are writing our actual stored procedure, okay? So what we are doing first, we are doing select star from is 3 to snowflake is our database name public is the schema name iris data set is the table name okay and then we are preparing this statement we are executing that okay then we want to store individual key value pair inside one array right so that's why we are creating here one empty array where array set equal to empty array okay right here we will be keep on appending our individual key value pair okay and then here what we are doing while result underscore set one dot next so here in result set one the complete result set of the select query select star query is stored now we are iterating row wise okay 
Now, once suppose you are in the first row, what you have to do? You have to use a for loop. You have to start from beginning. You have to go to end. Now, how you can understand where you have to stop or how many columns are there? How you can understand that dynamically? That's what the problem, right? Because in, it might happen in our this particular table, there may be five or six columns. In another table, there can be 10 or 20 columns, right? So, for loop should not be hard coded. Okay, it will iterate dynamically. So, how we can decide total number of columns present in that row? That is one interesting concept, right? So, for that, there is no rocket science. Simple thing is there is a function called get column count. Like earlier in our previous videos, we have seen get column value method, right? Which basically returns the value of a column in the current row. Similarly, here there, there is another method called get column count. This method returns number of columns in the result set for an executed query okay so you can make use of get column count basically that will give us in the result set how many columns are there and we will be using this one for iteration purpose so this is basically general syntax for for loop how we use in javascript or java kind of similar syntax only so here what we are doing where we will be starting from the first column right so first column column num equal to one okay so as you can see here Actually, in JavaScript, array index starts from 0. So, with respect to that point of view, you can start from column 0 also. But for our convenient purpose, I am starting from column index 1. Okay, I will tell you why. So, no need to worry. So, here what we are doing, where column num equal to 1 and we are iterating when the column num is less than equal to get column count. That is, we are iterating till the total number of columns each time we are increasing the value by one okay simple concept so what we are doing here fair column name okay so now when we are iterating using for loop when we are iterating using for loop suppose we are in the first row here when we are there we need to get the column name as well as the column value then only we will be able to generate this kind of data right so column name what is the column first column name which is id right and what is the first column value that is one so we need something using which we can get the column name and column value. Anyway, column value is simple get column value method we can use. To get the column name, here you can use get column name method. Okay. So, get column name in that if you pass the column index, then this method will return the name of the specified column at that particular index. Okay. That's why I am writing here column name equal to result set 1. So, we are in a particular row using result set 1 dot next. And in that particular row, we are getting the column name. Okay. Now, if you want to get the column name, you cannot start from array index 0, right? Because in Snowflake, here in SQL, the index will start from 1. Although in JavaScript, actually, array index, you can start from 0. But here, when you are iterating in Snowflake column, the first column index is 1, second column index is 2, third column index is 3. Like that, we define, right? So, in that case, we have to pass the indexing starting from 1. So, that's why I have started from 1 here, okay. Or else what you can do, there is another way. You can start from 0 and then instead of less than equal to, you can go till less than get column count and then here you can keep on increasing by 1 value and here you can keep plus 1. That way also the same problem will be solved, okay. Basically, it will start from 0 but here we are giving plus 1. So, that way the, uh, at the first instance when the value is 0, that means here the value will be coming as 0 plus 1 which is 1 and that way first column will be selected. Like that also you can do, not a problem, okay. So, here I will be going to here. I will be just reverting back the process and then here what we are doing? We are basically taking the column name and column value we are extracting using get column value method. And then here what we are doing, we are creating the JSON data. We are keeping the key name as column name and corresponding to that value is basically the column name. And then column value is basically the column value whatever we got. And then we have to append this particular JSON data in this array whatever we created, right? So, for that we are using push method, okay. In JavaScript, the push method adds new item to the end of the array, okay. In the JavaScript, I will be writing here, okay. So, that's what we are doing here, array set dot push row as JSON. So, that way, this particular JSON data, whatever it is generated, it will be getting pushed into the array, whatever we created here. And at the end, we are returning the array, okay. 
So try to understand very simple code. All we are doing to iterate row wise in the select star we are using while loop. To iterate column wise in a particular row we are using this for loop. Now how to know up to what we have to iterate? For that we are using get column count method to get in that particular result set how many columns are there. Okay. And then here get column name method we are using to get the column name at a particular index position. And what is the index position? The index position is getting stored in this column call num variable which is basically used in for loop for iteration. Okay. And to extract the value at that particular index, we can use get column value method as we used earlier, right? I have already explained that either you can pass the index or you can pass the column name to extract the value part, right? So here we are passing the index. That's all, simple concept, okay? And then we are creating the JSON data, we are pushing that in array. So now this particular code can generate that particular JSON data, what do we expect? Not only that, this concept, whatever I explained with for loop, array pushing, creating the JSON data, this concept you can reutilize in any other business requirement if you are getting in your development process. Okay, that's why this particular stored procedure is another very important procedure. I'll be sharing the code in the description box or in the comment section. Try it out, play with it, you'll be having fun with it. Okay, now what we are doing, we are basically calling this stored procedure. As soon as we are calling, here we are getting the result set, okay, how we are expected, right? So this is how from a tabular data you can generate this kind of key value pair kind of transpose data you can generate. I hope you understood this. For all these methods to explore more about this, you can obviously check the documentation which link I'll be providing in the description box, okay, because documentation content more detailed information about each and individual methods, whatever I use that here, okay. This is all for my this video. If you find this video helpful, then please like, share and comment, subscribe our channel if you have not subscribed till now. And don't forget to press the bell icon to get the notification of our latest videos. Thank you.